Functions are units of computation. We learned that in previous episodes. We also learned that you can see functions as replacement rules, that you can replace expressions till you achieve the final result. We also talked about functions as objects. We learned that in JavaScript, functions are indeed objects. Based on that, we decided to use this particular syntax for function definition, where we assign functions to variables instead of using the function keyword. Because this way we want to be more explicit about the fact that functions are indeed values and we can assign them to variables. But that's not the only reason. Functions can not only be assigned to variables, but functions in JavaScript can be also passed as input, as arguments to other functions. They can be returned from other functions as well. We say that in JavaScript, functions are first first class citizens. So they are like values. These are units of computations that behave like uh, integers or strings or something of that sort. And today we will learn about this concept of higher order functions, which is just another fancy term that allows us to go higher with the abstractions, to create some abstractions and to see certain things from a higher level. And that's a good way to remember about this term, higher order functions, so taking a a higher view on things. So let's see how it's done in, in practice. I will show you a few examples to give you some sort of intuition. So let's start by defining the higher order function. So higher order function functions are functions that there are two conditions and only one of those conditions must be fulfilled to consider a function to be a higher order function. So higher order functions are functions that one can be passed as input to other functions or let's highlight that two can be returned from can be returned from other functions as output so if one of those conditions is met we can say that this function is is a higher order function let's see some examples so example 1 passing functions as input so let's consider this first condition uh, in this example. Let's create a snippet. And usually you are passing functions as input to other functions because you want to wrap them with some additional functionalities. And a good example of that is profiling. So if you want to profile, measure, for example, the speed of your function, you can create another function which does this measurement and then you can apply this to any other function in your code. So let's create that such function, let's, like a very uh, basic dummy uh, profile function. And this function will take as argument another function. And what it will do, it will simply display when this function started and when it ended. And in between, we are executing this function. So this function is passed as argument. So it's not yet executed. And by adding the parentheses inside this profile function, we are executing it. So this fn, it can be any function. So let's create this function. So in our case, let's do compute. This compute will simply add two numbers like so. And here we need to display it so we see it. Like that. So we have the profiling function which wraps our function with two console logs. To be even more clear, let's do something different. So let's say result function like so and let's put 
the result here. So it's more clear that we are invoking this function here, assigning the result, and then displaying the result. So now what it's left to do is just execute the profile function and to pass as this fn, as this input, the, the compute function we created over here. And there you have it. We executed profile with the compute as an input. As you can see, we are displaying the, the starting point, the ending point, and then there is computing message, but the result is none because we haven't passed any arguments. And the reason is that if we pass those arguments here to compute, let's say we want to add two and three, this wouldn't work because the compute will be executed here before being passed to profile. And that's not what we wanted. We just wanted to pass the name of the function, not the result, and let the profile function to execute it. So we cannot pass the argument as we usually do directly to compute. We must find another way. And that's the reason there is a, not a number result because we haven't passed those x and y variables here. So let's fix that. And for that reason, let's create a second example, which will be returning functions as output. So this is the second condition in our definition of a higher order function. And let's grab this code because it will be similar. Like so. And now here, instead of just receiving the function, we will also return another function. And this another function will take some arguments and we will wrap this whole code we had previously into this new function. We will pass those arguments to our function. So at this stage, we don't know what function is being passed and which, which arguments are being passed. So we are using this, we are using this special destructuring syntax here. And now, because we are getting function as an argument, so we are passing it here, but because the invocation of profile, which is here, also returns a function, we must pass arguments to that. And we know that those arguments will be then passed to our function inside. So this way, we are passing the two and three to the result of profile function. And the result of profile function is a function, another function, anonymous functions, because we've given, we haven't given a name to this function. And this function expects some arguments because we are using this syntax with three dots. We don't explicitly say how many arguments, maybe any number of arguments, because we don't know we, because we don't know how many arguments the function that is being passed to profile will take. So it's a general way to saying any arguments, any number of arguments. So we are passing two and three to the result of profile. And again, the result of profile is a function. So this function gets those results and invokes our compute function on those results. And let's run this. So as you can see, it's very similar. The computation is wrapped in um, some logging, some profiling, let's say, data that we know where, when this function started and when it ended its execution. This time, the result is five because, because we passed the argument. So if we change that, it will um, change along the way. So in this case, we have a function which receives a function as input and at the same time, returns another function as output. It fulfills two of those conditions for a function to be considered a higher order function. We can also have functions that only return functions without receiving any functions. And let's create that now. So example three, and let's call it creating abstractions with functions. And this time let's create some something different. Let's create a function which is called is larger than. 
And this function will be creating a function for a specific number, for a specific value. So for example, is larger than 10 or, or is larger than 100. This value is not defined explicitly, it's a parameter. And now we need to create our function. So we want to have later on, we want to just have is larger than 10, like a specific instance to be result of invocation of our general function is larger than. So we are passing 10 because we want to have this abstraction is larger than 10 as a separate function. And then we can, of course, create another abstraction is larger than 100. And we can just pass another value to our general function is larger than the value we have here. And now we need to return a function. So we are returning a function and this function will also take an input because later on those two functions we need to run them is larger than 10 and let's say 3 or 4 so this parameter also has to be defined and it's defined here as a number and finally we can say value greater than number and let's display our result it's true because we need to invert the condition here of course so we because we are testing if the number is lar larger than the parameter we defined as a value of course so it's false and if we pass for example 14 it's true so it works so before we go let's simplify this function so in javascript if you have only one if a function has only one statement we can simplify this so we can remove the return we can remove the curly braces and we can pass this directly this is known as a implicit return because we are not explicitly stating the return is implicit the javascript engine can figure out that there is a return here and we can do the same with this line so there's another rule we don't have to use the brackets if there is one argument so we can remove this return we can remove those curly braces and this way, as you can see, you have two fat arrows. So let's see if it works. So let's set seven as argument. So it's false, 17 is true. Let's see if the other function is working. The is larger than 100. So false, 170 is true. In this way, we created some abstractions and we can create this shortcut, this alias, that we know that in our code is larger than 10 is something important is something meaningful and we want to create abstraction for that using our general function higher order functions allow us to create abstractions to take a higher view on our code as we've seen with this very simple example so we can say that abstractions hide the details and abstractions provide a higher level or more abstract higher level of thinking we don't have to deal with all the details we are creating the, those aliases those shortcuts for commonly used or for frequently used uh, functions and this way we hide details we hide unnecessary details it's just easier to think about so to finish off let's consider another example very common one, which is sorting numbers in JavaScript. So let's create another piece of code. Let's create an array of numbers. So, so this will be any numbers. And we want to sort this array. If I just do array sort, it doesn't work because by default in JavaScript, the numbers are being sorted using the lexical order, so which is the order of characters, of strings. These are not numbers being compared, but the strings. And this way, one one goes after one and before two. We want to sort this numerically. So luckily, sort is a higher order function. 
and, and it's defined as a method on the array object. So we can just create our own way of comparing elements and we can pass it to the sort. So let's call it numerical order and those functions which compare things take two arguments. So let's say A and B. And in JavaScript, if A is larger than B, this function should return something greater than zero. If A is lower than B, it should return something lower than zero. And if the, those two values are equal, it should return zero. So the best way to do this is by just subtracting one value from another. So if A is, B, if A is bigger than B, A minus B is larger than zero. If they are equal, it's zero. And if A is smaller than B, it's minus, so it's smaller than zero. And this way, we will have, we will have numerical order. And now if I pass this function to the sort function, which is a method, numerical order, now my array is sorted the way I want it. So we can just write a short note that the sort method allows to abstract away the methods of comparing individual, individual elements. These are higher order functions. It's a very simple concept and it's a very useful concept. It allows you to easily create abstractions and to make your code more concise, easier to reason about and more explicit. That's all for today. See you next time.